The garden is going absolutely crazy with productivity at the moment. We've got a ton of tomatoes, courgettes, runner beans, peppers, chilies. We've got all sorts of things happening in abundance. So today I'm going to do a bit of pickling. The last few pickling videos I've done have been lacto-fermented pickles where you just brine the vegetables or whatever you're pickling and let nature take its course and the lacto-fermentation process creates the pickle. Today is going to be a cooked pickle. It's going to be kind of like a chutney or the British definition of a chutney which is a kind of spiced sweet and sour chunky vegetable and fruit relish often paired with cheese. I'm going to be using the same recipe that I did in my odds and ends pickle a couple of years ago because that worked. Same recipe framework that is. Different vegetables and fruits. Now I probably should say before we go any further this video is only going to be making the pickle because after we've made it it has to mature for several months before it can be tasted. So just to avoid disappointment please set your expectations accordingly. And my methodology is going to be a little bit different for this one as well because whereas before I chopped things into little cubes and made a chunky pickle Today I'm going to go for something that's a bit more spreadable that might be ideal in a cheese and pickle sandwich. Also a bit of kind of labour saving. I'm going to use the food processor. I'll weigh these as I go and I'll put the actual recipe of what I've used, the proportions of what I've used in the video description. So if this turns out to be really nice you'd better replicate it exactly. I'm going to be using runner beans which I think is unusual in a pickle. Certainly it's the first time I've pickled runner beans. We sometimes have a little bit of a stringy bit along the edge of the pods there, so I'll just peel that off with a potato peeler. They are again going to go in the food processor. Runner beans I think will take a little bit more cooking than some of the other ingredients, so that's why I'm going to do a kind of two-stage approach here. Get the onions, runner beans, into the pan first. Runner beans have a slight tendency to be fibrous, so I'm going to chop them up into chunks before I put them in the food processor. So not completely labour saving, but I don't want to blend them into long strings. Pretty good. My sweet peppers I might just have to be a little bit careful with because somebody's been having a munch on this and that somebody might still be inside. So yeah, I don't want to pickle that little snail. So. That can go back out in the garden. Now in case you're worried that the inside parts of this pepper have been crawled on by a slimy snail, I'm not. Same thing here but I think that's only on the outside so let's just check. Yeah. Okay, roughly shop. Now I've also got this hot pepper and I don't know how hot it is. I have a feeling the answer might be very hot so I will taste a bit here. Yeah, that's pretty hot. So this one pepper will <clears throat> will provide the pungent spice for the whole pickle. <clears throat> oh, I don't know what variety of pepper that was, but that's good. Courgettes. Not going to take the pith out of them or anything like that. We're just going to use the whole courgette minus top and tail. Very, very wonky looking courgette there. We're probably actually going to make half the amount here. So instead of making a five kilo batch, I'm going to make a two and a half kilo batch. So two and a half kilos of vegetables, half a litre of vinegar in total. This is half of that. So a quarter of a litre of malt vinegar, which I'll put in with the vegetables. And then we're going to put these on, bring them to a boil simmer them until those pieces of runner bean are tender. Meanwhile, all of these lovely tomatoes, some of which are not quite so lovely, that one's started to go, so, but half of it's okay, the other half is a bit too far gone. So compost, but a fair bit of usable tomato there still. And yeah, there's just a ton of lovely tomatoes here. I will cut them up. I am gonna chop these up because otherwise the skins will tend to stay intact. So I'm going to chop these into rough chunks before I put them in the food processor. 
So you've got a mixture of plum tomatoes, little orange cherry tomatoes, some very unusual, very odd little pear-shaped yellow tomatoes. These gorgeous, these are so, so intensely tomato flavour. You might think that a yellow tomato wouldn't taste as tomato as a red tomato, but it's more so. The vegetables we put in first, which is the peppers, the beans, the courgettes, are starting to cook down nicely now. So in with the chopped tomatoes. Now we still need some other things to mix to make this up to two and a half kilos. So I'm going to use some prunes, which will add some sweetness to it. And I've also got one more little treat in the garden waiting for me out there. Let's go and get some elderberries. So, how about these elderberries? We've got loads of elder trees in the woods here at Trimp Cottage. So, we've got loads of elderberries. You're not meant to eat these raw. There can be problems with the seeds can develop cyanide in your stomach, but that's like a lot of things. When they're cooked, they're fine. So anyway, these are so ripe, they're just falling off. So these berries, I'm just gonna take them all off. You can do this with a fork but these are so ripe, they're just falling off in my hand like that. They look like little black currants. Elderberries used to be used for adulterating red wine and it was banned because it was so good. So beautiful elderberries, 289 grams. And I'll, I'm not gonna blend these or anything. These are gonna go in right at the last minute, just gonna cook them until they burst. I will give them a little rinse just so that anything dust and stuff on them can float off. Next, we're gonna have some prunes. So these are prunes, dried plums. That's about 300 grams. These are gonna provide the dark sort of color that we expect from a, a pickle of this sort, but also they're going to provide some of the sugar that's required for pickling. And furthermore, they'll thicken up the pickle. So those aren't gonna go in the food processor but I'm just gonna chop them. I'm not gonna pulp them. Good. So over here on the cooker, this pickle might look really unpromising, but well, firstly, it's not a beauty contest anyway, not visually, but also there's some transformation about to happen. So that's the prunes in. We also need now the other 250 ml of vinegar and some spices. All spices gonna be the kind of key spice in this. So we're gonna have two that's, that would be two teaspoons full. We'll have some ground mixed spice, which does actually contain a bit of allspice, I think, but this has got ginger and, and coriander and dill seed, cinnamon. We're gonna have a teaspoon full of salt. All of these measurements are kind of approximate and you can adjust them. If you want a more sour pickle, you can add less sugar, more vinegar. I haven't added the sugar yet, by the way. If you want, a sweeter pickle, just add more sugar. The amount of sugar that goes in here looks horrific, but you only have about a tablespoon of this on a cracker with some cheese. In this size batch, there would normally be 500 grams of sugar, but those prunes are really sweet. So it's actually gonna be more like about 300 grams. And I'm just using demerara sugar because that's what I happen to have. It doesn't really matter because it's all gonna dissolve in. There is a, a lot of scope for kind of forgiveness of inaccuracies here. As long as you have enough vinegar and a bit of sugar, it will pickle. So now I just need to simmer that to reduce it. It's too wet at the moment. There's too much liquid there. I'm going to reduce it down until it's a bit thicker. Then about probably 20 minutes before the end of that cooking, we're going to put the elderberries in. This might take three quarters of an hour of simmering now just to reduce it down, which is why you can hear the extractor fan on. That's to remove all the steam from the kitchen. Right, that's had about half an hour of reducing and simmering now. And you can see the colors changed a lot. And most of that's because the prunes have kind of dissolved into it, which has thickened it. It is now time for those elderberries. I'm just gonna cook that until those burst. And they're gonna make it a very interesting color because they're quite purple. So it will probably make it a kind of purplish brown pickle. Meanwhile, over here, I have an array of vessels. So just different jam jars and preserving jars and so on. These do not need to be sterilized. 
because the pickle, the vinegar, sugar and salt is the thing that preserves it. So these don't need to be sterile, this is not jam making, and they don't need to be canned afterwards because again the pickle is just the thing that's preserving it. So starting at the larger end of the scale, I'm going to fill these jars up. Okay, that looks about right for that one. So I'll put the lids on while they're hot because that will help to create a vacuum seal which will seal it nicely. And I like to use a variety of different sized jars because it, it makes it a bit easier to use all of the mixture. As I say, this pickle won't be ready until Christmas. But I will just have a little taste now so I can give you an idea. You'd need to obviously adjust your expectations if you're tasting a hot pickle when it's fresh because the maturing process and cooling down will adjust the flavours quite a lot. However, I can tell you I have some high expectations for this one. I think it's going to be really good. Now I'm just going to wipe the rim there so we did get a decent seal. And that is just about going to be spot on. How about that? So there we go, the fruits of this morning's labour. Five assorted jars of shrimp cottage pickle. When we get to the point of tasting it, that video will be linked in the description of this one. I hope this has been interesting. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.